Welcome to this quick start for V-Ray for Modo video. In this video, I'll be looking at the V-Ray physical camera and also at some of the lens effects that you can add using V-Ray. So I've got my headphone scene open once again and I've got the camera item selected in the item list. Now in order to use the V-Ray physical camera, I need to make sure that I add the correct package to my scene. So I'm going to go to the V-Ray menu, add package. Now there's two options here. I can either add a V-Ray camera to selected cameras or add a V-Ray physical camera to selected cameras. And this is the option that I'm going to select because this option has far more parameters. You can see that once I've added this package to the scene, I get some additional tabs here in my camera item with all these additional controls. So with this done, I'm going to enable depth of field and uh, I'm going to restart V-Ray RT to see if anything's changed. Now as you can see the resulting render is very dark and the reason for this is that by default Modo uses the white level in the final color output to determine exposure whereas V-Ray by default uses photographic exposure. So in order to get the V-Ray camera to match the brightness level of the Modo camera I'm going to need to set the exposure. So looking at this render, I can guesstimate that it needs at least another four stops of exposure if we're talking in photographic terms. However, I don't want to touch the f-stop in the aperture because that's going to determine the depth of field and I want to keep that as it is. So in order to change the exposure without affecting the depth of field, I'm going to need to change either the shutter speed or the ISO, or in this case, I'm going to change both. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add two stops of exposure to the ISO by taking it from 200 to 800 and I'm going to add another two stops of exposure to the shutter speed by taking it from 200 down to 50 and having done that I'm going to launch V-Ray RT once again. So now you can see we've got a much better match with the original in terms of exposure. So the next thing to do is to play with some of the photographic parameters that are available to us in V-Ray. I'm going to start by adding some vignetting, so I'm going to set the vignetting to 1. Having done that, I'm going to relaunch V-Ray RT. So you can see the vignetting effect is quite subtle, but it does add a subtle darkening to the corners and does make the image feel more photographic overall. And next, we'll take a look at the white balance control. Now this render has what a photographer would describe as mixed lighting. That is to say, there's two different light sources, both of which have very different color temperatures from each other. On the left hand side, we have a warmer light source, and this is an area light which is simulating a table light. On the right hand side, we have a cooler light source, and this is another area light, and this time it's simulating a window which has a dusky evening sky behind it. So the purpose of white balance in photography is to take a light source that's either warm or cool and neutralize it so that it's pure white. However, when you are in a mixed lighting situation like this one, it's not possible to neutralize both the light sources. You can only white balance one or the other. But having this white balance control in your V-Ray physical camera gives you similar options to those used by real photographers. So let's click on the color swatch to open it. Now we need to change the color model from HSV to Kelvin because that's how white balance in photography actually works. So if I drag this slider which is currently in the white part of the spectrum to the left into the warmer part of the spectrum, what will happen is that these warmer colors will become more neutral in the image. However, if I drag it to the right hand side into the blue part of the spectrum, then it's the cooler colors in the image which are going to become more neutral. So the thing to do is to start V-Ray RT once again and try and do this interactively. So you can see that as I drag this slider into the warmer part of this spectrum, these warm colors on the left hand side are becoming much more neutral. However, the side effect is that the cool colors on the right hand side are becoming even cooler. Their effect is greatly exaggerated. Now if I was to drag the slider the other way into the cool part of the spectrum, we would of course get the opposite effect as the uh, 
cool colors become more neutral, the warm colors become even warmer. So the idea here is to try and find a pleasing balance between warm and cool that works for your particular image. So I'm going to drag it just slightly into the blue part of the spectrum in order to slightly neutralize the blue from the uh, window light and slightly exaggerate the warmth of the table lamp. So with that done, I'm now going to do a production render of this image so that we can have a look at the lens effects. So I'm just going to click this button in the toolbar to launch V-Ray's bucket renderer. So with my bucket render now complete, I'm going to click this button here at the bottom of the V-Ray frame buffer window to open the lens effects panel. And the nice thing about the lens effects is they're applied as a post effect and you can adjust them interactively. Now you have a choice of two main effects, there's bloom and there's glare. Now personally I generally prefer to apply glare rather than bloom because I find the bloom effect is a little bit too strong. You can see that it softens the image rather drastically even if you drag the size slider quite far down you can see it's giving very soft results whereas the glare just tends to uh, affect the brightest light sources and uh, doesn't give such a strong softening on the overall image. So the key with these lens effects is to not be too heavy handed. What you're trying to do is to mimic the real world behavior of physical lenses. When there's really bright light shining through a lens, any imperfection or dirt in the lens is going to cause some haloing around that bright light or highlight. So that's the effect we're trying to achieve and generally it only needs to be very, very subtle in order to give a convincing and photorealistic result. So in this case, I'm really only adding a tiny bit of glare. I just want this very bright highlight here to have a little bit of a halo around it. And you can see if I turn it off and back on, the effect is pretty subtle, but that's all I need really for this image. So this concludes this introductory look at V-Ray's physical camera. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you join me next time. Oh.